The idea of consciousness is notoriously obscure and difficult to analyze. It's not even clear what the word stands for – an entity, quality, process, or something else. New analysis, however, may shed some light on the subject by telling an evolutionary tale of our subconscious attraction and fascination with fractals. In the early 1950s, a relatively unknown artist by the name of Jackson Pollock was brought to the limelight for his eccentric painting technique of splashing normal paint found in every home onto a canvas laid out on the ground, creating what seems to be random shapes. Over the years, Pollock refined his technique and gained greater public praise with one critic writing, We have a deliberate disorder of hypothetical hidden orders, or multiple labyrinths. Fifty years later, in 1999, a physicist by the name of Richard Taylor concluded that the shapes Pollock was creating were not random at all. They were in fact fractal, and their complexity regularly increased over the years as Pollock refined his method. Fractals, however, were unknown at Pollock's time, and it wasn't until 1975 that a mathematician named Benoit Mandelbrot coined the term to describe patterns that look identical across orders of magnitude. Fractals are designed by their fractal dimension. A fractal line drawn on a piece of paper will have a dimension between 1 and 2. The greater the complexity of the line, the closer its dimension is to 2. Pollock's paintings were analyzed by Taylor, and it was calculated that the fractal dimensions of his work in the early days were barely fractal, hovering close to 1. But they increased in complexity over the years, reaching 1.7 in 1952. Pollock appeared to be intuitively drawn to the patterns and spent 10 years working on his fractals. The question is, why? In 2002, a man named Jason Paget received a fatal blow to his head. He survived, but the incident left him with a severe concussion, post-traumatic stress disorder, and a new way of seeing the world. Paget claimed that everything now appeared as distinct geometric patterns, that under rescaling they still look the same. He saw fractals everywhere, in trees, clouds, and even in water, as they were now superimposed over his vision. Scientists scrambled to scan Paget's brain to identify the region that's responsible for this new superpower. But the transformation itself may have been a clue for fractal visual processing in all of us. We may have evolved to be skilled decoders of the fractals that surround us in nature. Even our bodies display a fractal nature the way blood vessels branch out like root systems, or how the brain houses folds within folds. This means that we are built to process fractals easily and efficiently, while at the same time being subconsciously drawn to the patterns. Nature's most common fractal dimensions fall between 1.3 and 1.5, and we have evolved to effortlessly detect images associated with these dimensions. A similar study by the same physicist found that looking at mid-dimension fractals reduces stress by as much as 60%. This may also be why patients recover more quickly when they have a window with a natural view, compared to those who have a brick wall as their window view. EEG measurements of brain activity show that mid-dimension fractals produce a strong alpha wave response, which corresponds to a wakefully relaxed state and a strong beta wave response, indicating a high ability to focus. This stimulates multiple regions of the brain that are responsible for visual processing, spatial memory, and emotional reaction to music. Fractals can also be found in the pitch fluctuation and rhythm of classical music of Bach and Beethoven. If everything we do has a fractal nature, is it possible that consciousness itself has a fractal character as well? In the 1980s, a cardiologist at Harvard Medical School named Ari Goldberger discovered a peculiar pattern in our heartbeats. He found that the fluctuations in our heart rates that happen over seconds are statistically identical to those that happen over minutes and hours. This indicates that our heartbeats are also fractal, and the more fractal they are, the healthier. In other words, a fractal system always seeks balance between chaos and order. Any shift of that balance in either direction can cause irreparable damage. In that sense, when the heartbeat loses its fractal correlation, it becomes unstable, resulting in serious medical complications such as atrial fibrillation. On the other hand, a steadier and predictable pulse rate could indicate congestive heart failure or cancer. The same is true for the brain. 
According to EEG measurements, the electrical activity is too complex in patients with schizophrenia, while it's too simple in patients with epilepsy. In the brain as in the heart, just right means just fractal enough to walk the line between chaos and order. If consciousness was fractal, how would it manifest itself in reality? How can we be certain that it is indeed fractal? In the mid-1980s, physicist Roger Penrose offered one potential manifestation. He suggested that consciousness arises from quantum computation happening inside the brain. Anesthesiologist Stuart Hameroff followed up on this theory and suggested that this quantum processing does not happen at the level of neuron, but in tiny structures inside the neuron itself. These structures are called microtubules, and they are responsible for cell division and structural organization. Hameroff argues that consciousness can move up and down the fractal hierarchy, like music changing octaves, resonating across levels. Other scientists approach the application of quantum physics to brain dynamics differently. One such approach comes from physicist Giuseppe Vitiello. He compares it to a magnet and describes how it's chaotic at the microscopic level, until something happens which causes the magnetic arrows to all align in the same direction, resulting in an organized macroscopic system. This quantum coherence, he says, is the core of the brain's fractal processes. Another approach comes from philosopher Carrie Welch. She thinks consciousness is a temporal fractal, and the way we perceive time is not a linear progression, but a layering, a fractal. She explains how infants live purely in the present because their brains are dominated by delta waves. These are the same waves that dominate the brains of adults who are in deep sleep. But as we grow older, we begin to witness faster brain waves dominating theta and alpha waves at first, and finally beta waves once we become adolescent. Welch explains how this layered understanding of time is associated with the way we divide time into smaller and smaller pieces. Looking back at Jackson Pollock's increasingly fractal paintings as he grew older was a natural evolution. Maybe his paintings were a reflection of our increasingly fractal nature. As he said himself, painting is self-discovery. Every good artist paints what he is.